Okay, in this video we're checking out the Hawkeye Firefly 4K split camera. This is another one of these split style cameras. And this one's a little bit different. It's a 30 by 30 size board you can see here. Kind of on the big side. Uh, 19 millimeter micro size camera here with an M12 lens. 160 degree field of view. And you've got this uh, ribbon cable here it is a bit stiff here so it's not that flexible. It does feel much heftier than say the Turtle or the Split Mini V2, uh, but this does 4K 30 and all the way down to 720p 30 and a variety of resolutions in between. Um, this does not have onboard Wi-Fi. Uh, you actually change all of your settings you know, via this little joystick controller here. And I'll show you the menus that show up on the monitor here in a second. It looks a lot like an action camera menu and um, kind of reminds me of um, the SJ Cam series and you, you do have quite a lot of flexibility in terms of what you, what settings you can change. We'll go over that here in a second. You get a manual, uh, you get a little adapter here for making this a full-size or to fit a, a full-size camera uh, frame. And you get this little piece here that will hold the micro SD card so it'll protect it from being pinged out. So it'll go on here like this. Now keep the card from ejecting. You get a couple of wiring looms here. These are the same. And bare wire on this side. Plugs into this plug right here. And uh, basically the only three that I'm, I'm going to use are the Three in the bottom, the red, black, and yellow. It's going to be power, ground, and video. I think the voltage range is like 7 to... Yeah, the voltage range is 7 to 25 volts. It is not 5 volts. It's kind of something different that I wasn't expecting. So you can power this off of direct LiPo voltage if you want to. And the other connectors here, the... Uh, I guess it's kind of hard to see here. It's going to be the white wire, the blue wire, and the green wire there. Uh, it's going to be your voltage and I'm, they're calling the other two uh, trigger one and trigger two. Not 100% clear as to what that is and might be something related to connecting to your flight controller, perhaps camera control, but it's totally unclear in the manual so I can't really explain it at this point. Maybe I'll, I'll figure it out later. Uh, then this port here is obviously for the joystick controller. Okay, so here is the weight without any of the other accessories. And this is going to be on the heavier side, 20, almost 22 grams. Okay, just going to give you a little bit closer look at the board itself. Here's the top side with the micro SD card slot. You got a microphone there for recording audio. You have a little buzzer here, so it makes sounds, um, beeping sounds. You have a couple buttons here, on off switch and a mode switch here. Uh, that's for starting and stopping recordings and also uh, switching the different modes for the different resolutions. You can do that via the button here. You can also do that uh, via the on screen display and the joystick. And on this side here you got the, I think it's a DS, uh, DSP chip there. Like some memory chip there and maybe a, a battery there. Micro USB slot here and I think this might be a micro HDMI out, but you don't get a micro HDMI cable. Uh, I believe you can send this uh, video signal out to uh, some other, like a monitor or something like that via this micro HDMI port right here. And here's a closer look at the camera unit itself. There's a plastic backing on here to protect the components on the back of the sensor board, which is good. And then uh, this is what the lens looks like. So I just got this plugged in here to a video transmitter. Let's go ahead and fire this up and we'll take a look at the settings. Okay, it's powering on and it did take a little bit of time for it to turn on. So we have your power on time here, pilot name, voltage, uh, there's no voltage sensor connected, and it shows you the current resolution 4K30. And I'm not exactly sure what the L stands for. Okay, so it looks like the correct orientation is with the ribbon cable coming out of the bottom. Of, I think you could probably flip that in the menu. And let's just take a quick look at the 
uh, field of view. It's pretty narrow. So you can see the door on the left there, the ceiling fan, and then over the side is the bookcase over there. So it's saying it's 160 degree field of view, but yeah, to me it looks um, less than that. Now this is the 16 by 9 4K resolution, so possibly the there's going to be more vertical field of view if you use one of the other resolutions. Let's uh, actually see if we can toggle them via the buttons here. Okay, so this this button right here starts and stops recording. So you can see it's recording right now with the blinking red light. And I'll press the button again, and that stops the recording. Blinking red light is off. I think the other button here is the mode button here. So let's see if I. Yep, so that switches the resolution. So now we're 2, 2K, uh, 2.7K 60, 1080p 120, 1080p 60. And then we're back to 4K 30. So I think these are the ones that are preset via the mode button. There's actually more available in the OSD. So I believe you can also start and stop the video via the center button here. So if you press that, it'll start recording. And then press that again, that'll stop. I think to bring up the menu, you short press the left button like this. And this brings up the main menu so we're under we're in uh, video mode right now so if we get out of, let's take it out of this okay so switch between the photo and video mode you're gonna go so for example we're in currently in video mode so we're gonna long press the down button and then that'll change that to photo mode say 12 megapixels there and you go back into video mode you long press the up button and now we're back into um, video mode. So the menu that you bring up in video mode will look like this icon, it looks like a camcorder. And you get out, and then the one in photo mode looks like a camera. So that's how you would get between the two different modes. I'm gonna show you the menu in video mode first. Okay, so we start off with resolution. And so here's all the ones that are available, 4K 30, 2.7K 343. And then so here's the rest of the resolutions available, uh, 2.7K 60, 69. You have 2, 2K 60, 2K 30, 1080-120, 1080-60, 1080-30, 720-240, 720-60, 720-30. And we're back to 4K30, so I'm going to put that back on 4K30. Here are the other options here. you got loop recording, wide dynamic range, exposure, record audio, date stamp, EIS, time lapse record, slow motion, metering, sharpness, auto recording, codec, snapshot in recording, fixed frame rate, electronic shutter and we're back to the beginning so yeah there's a lot you can change here so you can change your shutter speeds so currently on auto uh, fixed frame rate is on snapshot recording means you can take a picture while it's recording codec you can choose between h264 h265 auto recording is currently off you have sharpness, you have um, strong, soft, and normal, metering, we have average and center weight and spot, and we have slow motion, so you can do 1080, 120, or it's currently off, there's even time lapse recording, a lot of options here, it's going to go over this really quick, EIS, electronic image stabilization, might try that later. Date stamp is off. That will give you that. Uh, we'll actually record the date stamp in the video. We want to record audio, so leave that on. Exposure uh, zero. We want wide dynamic range on. And loop recording is currently off, but you can change that if you want 
to uh, between three minutes and ten minutes. Okay, so this is the second menu under video. So you have date, date, time, auto power off, beep sound. That's the sound that the beeper is making while we're using the menu. Language, frequency, TV mode, HDMI out. So I think yeah, this one will give uh, the video. I guess it scales it to 1080p or 720p for the HDMI out. OSD mode, and that's currently on. That's the stuff on the bottom there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. We have logo watermark. I think that'll record a Hawkeye Firefly watermark on the video. We'll leave that off. ISO, and we have auto, and all the way to 3200. Leave that on auto. But if you want to sh um, fix your ISO, fix your shutter speed, you could do that. For example, if you're using maybe an ND filter. Okay, so under image effect, we have normal, black and white, vivid, sepia, sketch. Color pencil, negative, rock, cool green, warm yellow. Uh, there's a lot of options. White balance, uh, you have auto, daylight, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, diving mode. Yeah, diving mode, I guess if you want to do underwater. And uh, I'll leave that on auto. Distortion correction, I guess if uh, you feel that the lens has too much distortion, but it seems to be fine for me. For me. Field of view, okay, so that's what the uh, L means. It means large. So have, <laughs> it says large, but the field of view seems kind of narrow to me. So there's large, medium, small. We're going to leave it on large. We have image rotation here. We can flip the image if you want. And then here's where you can adjust the voltage reading on the OSA format the micro SD card. And all data with the blue. Let's go ahead and format that card. Here we could return. Uh, to default settings if we want to, and this is the current version of the firmware, and that is everything in this menu for video. And we'll go out of this into the photo mode, and we'll see what kind of settings we have for photo mode. This is probably one that I probably won't use too often. So you have self timer, resolution, so 12 megapixels all the way to. 20 megapixels to 5 megapixels. Yeah, so a lot of options there. Burst photo, quality, and so you have fine normal economy, sharpness, anti shaking, quick review, date stamp, exposure, scene. Let's see, this would be different. Not too many options here. EIS, wide dynamic range, it's off in photo. I'm going to turn that on. Metering, we have average, center weights, and spots. So you can even do long exposure photos here. And I think that is it. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, so the next menu here is date time, auto power off, beep sound. This looks like the same as on the video. Okay, that covers all of the menu items, a lot of options for sure. So, and just looking at this image here that I'm seeing, that this is basically the FPV feed. It looks okay. I mean, I know there's a lot of complaints about the FPV feed. So, let me see if I can get, just give you guys uh, think a look at what this would feel like through goggles. Okay, so this is what the camera is looking. I'm looking at the box basically. You can see here and some other items. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, it definitely, I think it definitely looks better than the split mini for sure. But yeah, we'll, we'll record some DVR a little bit later. You guys can see that a little, bit, a little later in the video. But it looks pretty decent uh, for a split style camera. Okay, so it's enough rambling on about all the technical stuff and uh, features. Let's go ahead, take this and put this into, I'm gonna put this into a five inch and uh, get some footage for you and you guys can tell me what you guys think of the, um, the image quality of this camera.